since the arrays in C language suck, like when you actually write an array, you exceed the size of the array, and it, you can actually go off the boundary of the array, and you can damage things, right? Since that happens, we want to actually create some type of uh, a dynamic template for an array. So when we create an array of anything, that array is safe to use without any problem. That's what we want to do, OK? So essentially, what I want to create is a class array. So I want to actually create a class array. But I want this array to be automatic type of a thing, which means if I say I want five elements and I go seven, it automatically adds two elements to it, makes it seven. If I go 50, it's going to resize itself to 50 without losing any information. So I want this to happen. OK? So that's what I want to do. Because it's an array, I want it to be of an array of any type. And because I, I want it to be an ar array of any type, I'm going to uh, convert it. I'm going to create a template. And I'm going to create a template right out of the bath with a uh, Creation of a template, there are certain rules and regulations for creating a template for a class, and I'm going to explain to you exactly what they are when you are creating a template. Okay? <clears throat> Again, classes are different when it comes to, uh, I'm not going to go through function templates. You've already done the SOAP 244. I went through it briefly in the other thing. Exactly the same, no difference. I don't want to go through it. No, no wasting time. But for, for functions, we know that the function templates are called, are essentially function templates are, are invoked uh, from compiler through the signature of a function. Because each function has a specific signature, so the compiler can identify what type of function you want to create based on the signature of a function. And if you don't, if if you want to enforce something, you can always enforce the creation of a specific type of template by adding the signature of the template to the name of the function. We talked about those things. With classes, that's not the case. Classes don't carry the signature. Class only has a name, array. I don't know what type of a thing I want to create. So by creating, by to create actually an array, what I need to do is to write something like, first of all, let me add, include the, the, the header file. And if you recall, as we said, everything, as we said, everything that involves with a template, it has to be in the header file and included when you are actually using that template. Because the compiler needs to know all the detail to regenerate the code, you cannot have half of it in some other CPP file. Everything has to be in the .h. So to me, to be able to actually create an array of something, I have to mention array, say, int a. I have to do something like that. Now I have an array of integer called a. This is how the compiler identifies what type of int it has to create. So the type int over here will go into type. And any place I write type, it gets converted to int. Are we OK with this? OK. So I know that I want to create an array, and we have already done that 55,000 times. I know whenever we have an array, an array means a pointer of that type pointing to series of that thing in memory. That's what an array is. We know that from IPC 144 or OP 244. No need to explain again. If you don't know it, please go study quickly. OK? So these are the two things I need to know about an array to make the array work for me. First, I need to have a type of that, the type pointer of that type that I want to create. In this case, it's an integer. So it's going to be integer pointer and data that I'm going to initialize it to null. Because we said any unused pointer has to be set to null. That's our rule. And I need to have the size of that. So that helps me break the problem with the arrays in C where the, the size is always unknown. You never know what the size of an array is in C. It's impossible to find out. 
if, you, of course, when you are in the same source code, you can see it. But when you pass an array from function to function, you don't know what the size is. You're just passing a pointer, correct? I want that to be fixed. So therefore, I'm going to have something over there called size. Now, things that I want to do over here, I want to, of course, uh, uh, I want to create an array. Um, I want to be able to, um, so I'm just going to put, put these things over here and explain to you, okay? I want to create an array with at least size of one, okay? That's how I'm designing it. I don't know if that's right or not. I just wrote it like that 45 minutes ago. So that's what it is. Maybe it's not the best way, maybe it's an awful way, but I did it that way. So I'm saying, if you don't give me the size, I'm going to create an array with element of one. <laughs> it means it has only one element. If you want to use more, it's going to add, of course. We're going to do that. But if, if you don't tell me, it's just going to be one element. I don't understand what is the meaning of having an array with nothing. That doesn't make sense. When you have an array, at least you have one thing over there, right? And that's what I did. It. Of course, I need to be able to copy this array to another array properly. Because it's dynamic, it needs a copy constructor. And I need to be able to set an array to another one. I don't want to go through a loop like the old-fashioned thingy that I had that I have to copy each element of an array. I just want to say array A, array B, A is equal to B. Whoop. Everything gets copied perfectly and properly. Okay? So, now, the rules and regulations of using the template signature, where do we use it? You use the template signature wherever logically it applies. Number one, that's rule number one, which is line number five. Logically, I want to have an array of types, right? An array of ints, an array of doubles, an array of employees. I want to have that array, so I need a pointer of that type, so it goes over there. There is no uh, question about that. Are we okay with this? The other thing is that the name of the class the name of the class that you are converting to a template, it has to always carry the signature of the template. Why? Because that's how the compiler recognizes which one it's dealing with. Anytime you are using the name of the array, you have to add the signature of the template to it, with few exceptions. Exception number one. The class name right after the template header, that doesn't carry the signature. Because it's right after the template, it's not stupid. It knows what's going on. OK? Number two, constructor names. Because constructor names are not functions, they are telling, they are literally procedures of how this thing is supposed to get built. They don't need to carry signatures because you never call them. Remember, constructors can never be called. Because they can never be called, they don't need to carry the signature. And finally, the destructor. The destructor does not need to carry the signature. But at any other time, for example, I want to pass a reference of, a, of an array of that type to copy it, I need to have the signature for it. I want to have a, uh, uh, another one over here, I'm going to pass the signature to it. I want to return a reference of array, I'm going to pass the signature. So this operator equal, I know what type of integer what type of array is returning. Remember, this class is supposed to get replicated so many times for different types. I'm going to have an array of int. I'm going to have an array of doubles. So the assignment operator needs to know which kind of array is returning. Is it a double? Is it an integer? Which one? So I have to specify. So those are the things that I need to know. Obviously, I want this to be efficient, so when it's getting copied from a nameless object. I want to be able to move one array to another. Therefore, the move constructor and move assignment are a necessity to make this thing efficient. If I want to, if I have a gigantic array and I want to move that array from one scope to another and just throw the last one away, I need to be able to move it. So the move constructors are what I'm going to create. The next thing I need to do. Did I put the? Yeah. The next thing I need to do, I always need to know what is the size of my array. So my array can, should be able to tell you what is its size, so you don't have to remember. 
And any time you carry your array, it's going to tell you, I have 50 elements. I have 20 elements. I have one element. It's going to tell you exactly how many elements it has. So you're never, you're, you're always sure how far you go, although you don't need it. Because if it goes more, it's going to resize itself. And how is it going to resize itself? Simple, like this. Oh, by the way, you see that this is constant. I don't need to put any type of uh, emphasis on that. <laughs> we know that it's constant because it's not, it's, it's returning a, right, okay. So how do I resize it? I, I write a method and any size that I give to that thing is going to resize it to that size. If I have an array of five, I can make it 10. Then it's going to resize it to 10 and copy the first five elements and the rest will be garbage. Or it can do reverse. I have 10 and I want to shrink it to 5. I got 5. It's going to put the first 5 and truncate the rest, put it in garbage. So that's my resize. Finally, I need to access every individual element. OK? Usually, they provide a function for it. We could have just ignored that. But we, we provide a function for it. So you can say a at. Four, it means give me the fourth element. Sorry, element index four, which essentially is identical, is identical to the index operator. Right? Essentially identical to the index operator. And obviously, a size at returns type reference, returns an integer reference, it turns an employee reference, whatever that element is. And it's the exact same thing with the operator, uh, with the index operator. If any, at any part you feel that I missed you, or I'm going too fast, or I'm talking gobbledygook, spot, stop me. OK? And finally, I need to make sure that when I am gone, there is no memory leak. And that's the destructor of the array. And that's another exception. That does not carry the signature of the template. Are we OK down to here? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Yes. Why we are using virtual? OK, that's something that, first of all, remember I told you that Remember I told you I never blindly follow anything and always understand it and ask questions? For this one, blindly follow it. <laughs> Which means anytime you're creating a destructor, make it virtual. Now I'll tell you why. Yes? Even if, even if it doesn't what? If you don't do inheritance, if you are not doing any dynamic memory allocation, if any class that you create, even if you are not doing anything in a destructor, must have an empty virtual destructor. Always. Why is that? The reason is that, the reason, what virtuality guarantees? No, 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 no. Ah, when I ask you a question, please learn from now. When I ask you a question, answer concept. Answer as if you are an interview. If somebody asks you what virtuality does, don't say because it's the alloc don't code for them. What is the buzzword buzz answer for? That's a good thing for the quiz. Just give me two seconds. Let me pause this. So what does virtual a virtual method guarantee? A virtual method <laughs> as Rebeck just said, a virtual method guarantees that the latest version of a method is called. And when you make a destructor virtual, if this class is inherited to another class and dynamically created, and the pointer of the parent is holding that, and they use that pointer to delete it, it guarantees that the latest version of the destructor, which means the child's, will be called. And therefore, everything will be removed off, out of memory. If, you, if your destructor is not virtual, when the object gets destroyed, if the pointer of parent is pointing to a child, only the parent will be removed from the memory. 
Therefore, if even those automatic coders, like if you go over there and say create a new class, and it automatically creates it for you, you will see it puts a virtual destructor in it. It's, it's a standard thing that you do with a class. You always put a virtual destructor in your class, no matter what you do. So that's that. Uh, what else? Yeah. So uh, what do we want to do? Let's, uh, let's start with I'm just going to bring up the functions one by one and explain it to you. OK? <clears throat> the tag of template always affects the scope right after, even if it's only one line. OK? Only if it's only, I'm going to bring a water gun next time. Seriously, whoever talks, I'm going to go pss, 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 pss. OK. All right. So what I was saying is that a template, a template header only affects the scope that comes after. If you have only one thing over there, it's not going to affect it. it if, if you have only one uh, uh, statement over there, that's the end of your template. If you, want to, if you want to start anything new, you always have to start it with a new template header. So I want to actually uh, implement the constructor, and this is what I'm doing. So how I implement the constructor, I'm going to say this one will carry the signature because it has to tell constructor for which object is being created. So it carries the signature. The constructor is exempt. It doesn't carry the signature. It gets a size, set the size to whatever it is. It says, if size is equal to 0, set the size to 1. Easy. My class always has at least one element. And because it's an unsigned int, it cannot be negative. I don't need to worry about it. OK? So if it's any number that it comes in, it's going to allocate that much, and it's going to set the size exactly to that value. Are we OK with this? Very simple and straightforward. And it creates an array of new types to the size that I want. Of course, if I want to get that size and see what the size of the, of the object is, I need to tell, uh, oh, I need to be able to do copy and paste properly. Uh, okay, give me a second. So that's that. Here, there you go. So if I want to get that size, I need to get that size. And as you see, in this function, the only thing that carries the signature of the, of the template is the owner, that is, it's the, uh, the array type. There is nothing inside the function that needs the type. So it simply returns the size. Yes? Can you not just define everything inside the class itself? Or? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. I could do that, but, I, but if I did that, it was a special case that I wouldn't teach you properly. That's why I'm putting everything out there, just to show you what happens if I put everything outside. It could all be in line, no problem. OK? Yes? Before going into the array constructor first, it uh, sets size to M size, right? Before going yes. That's so. Yeah, exactly. So this is, if you recall, from OOP244, I call this initialization area. Remember that? I call this, so this is essentially where things get initialized at the moment of creation. So when you look at the sequence of events happening, first this initialization happens, then this, this initialization happens, then the content inside the constructor. So this is one, this is two, this is three. This is this, these are the sequence of things happening. Are we OK? Yes. Please use your opera voice. Loud. You can only initialize 50 variables that way if you want. Any variable that you want. Anything over there that you want to initialize, you can initialize that way if you have the variable handy. Pardon me? What are you talking about? You mean if I had type? So if I had type M data, type this, type that? 
Oh, here you mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you put comma and you keep going. Yeah, you put comma and you keep going. If you want to initialize arrays, like I could have done this actually. Instead of this, I could have, I could have initialized it this way. You know that, right? This is a universal way. That's the best way to do it actually. Universal way, because if you want to initialize arrays and stuff, then that's, that, that's going to work. Okay? The other way is constructor notation. This is universal initialization. So that's returning the size. And now, let's see how we can resize. So resizing is a review on uh, dynamic memory allocation. So to do resizing, for some reason everything went blue uh, all of a sudden. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, so did I miss uh, something somewhere? Meh. Nah. Anyways. So template type name tape. So the type is the only is uh, the thing that has to get carried over here. I have a new size, so I get uh, a temporary integer to count. Again, if new size is zero, I apply the exact same rule. New size is one to make sure that it is uh, it, they cannot put over there zero. <coughs> then I'm going to allocate the new size that I want. So this temp becomes the initially the new thing that I'm going to have. So I'm going to if it's 50, I'm going to have 50. If it's 2, I'm going to put 2. Then I'm going to have a for loop that starts from 0 up to size, uh, i being less than size, and i being less than new size, whichever comes first. So it keeps counting. Any of them goes false, it's going to stop. So like this, I can expand or I can shrink. It works, works for both. So I copy everything from the data of the uh, class into the data of the temporary allocation that I have. And after doing that, everything is copied from M data, from the data of the class, to the temporary location. I don't need the data anymore. Gone. I delete the data, so the data of the class is gone. Now I'm going to tell to data to point to the newly allocated memory. Okay? and updates the size to the new size. And I'm done. OK, so I simply resized it. Anybody have any problem with this? OK, so let's change this temp name. I'm going to ch change it to new data. And I'm going to call this new, da new data. Just for us to know, it's, it, it is essentially temp, but I want you to know which one is new and which one is old. So it copies the old data into new data and then deletes the old data, then makes the pointer to the old data to point to the newly allocated memory, and we are done. It's resized. Are we okay with this? I'm going to use this function whenever I want to resize it. Easy. So I'm not going to worry about how resizing is going to happen. So if I want to implement the at function to actually access the, the array, this is what I'm going to do. It's very simple and straightforward. So what I'm doing is this. I'm saying, give me the index that you want the element for. If that index is bigger than the size, resize to index plus 1. Done. Now give the index out. If it is within the size, it's going to send the element. If it's not within the size, it's going to expand it and then send it. So you always have, it, it, this one never fails. You never ever, unless you go out of memory, OK? But if you exceed the size of the array, it just expands the size of the array as you go. Easy, right? And to be able to give it a nice look, I'm going to make sure that that function is accessible through the index operator. So index operator essentially returns at index. So they can actually use it with an array notation. 
Are we okay down to here? Obviously, when the class goes out of scope, I want anything, everything to be gone and destroyed, so I don't need to, so I, I'm just going to delete the data when I'm gone. And because I'm always using the array notation, even for one, I can delete it with that with no problem. Even if I'm having one element, it's, I'm, I'm creating it with the one element with the array notation, so I'm fine with that. Obviously, we need to be able to copy this from one to another. We all know what the syntax of copying is, so uh, it's as simple and straightforward that you have. I have an array type. Again, this is array type. Constructor is except. I'm not going to put the name of the type over there. I'm going to say constant array type reference, the one that I'm going to copy from. Now I'm going to say call operator equal and pass the one that I want to copy to it. Do I need to worry? Do I need to worry if the M data pointer is null or not? No, because I initialized it over here. That happens first. Because that happened first, any object that is created, the M data is going to be null. And because this is a constructor, a copy constructor, the null will be null. Uh, the, the data will be null. Therefore, the assignment operator works perfectly. An assignment operator works exactly like a routine that you had, which essentially means it, what it's going to do, first it's going to check to make sure it's not going to copy anything to itself. That's a no-brainer. We know that. Then it's going to say, OK, delete my data. So if it's copying, I have no worries over here because that's null and delete does nothing when it's null. Are we good? Then it's going to create uh, an array of types to the exact size of the one that is copying. And because I'm a C programmer, I don't want to have an extra line, so I just initialize size right in there. So it sets the M size to the size of the, the right operand array. And it's going to go from 0 up to that point and one by one copy all the data from one to another. And this needs a documentation for our template. What is a documentation? The data, the type that my element, the, the types of the elements of the array must be copyable and assignable. If the elements are of, are of type employee, that employee must have an assignment operator uh, created for it. Assignment should work for it. That's what you need to always have with your template specification. What's going to happen in my template? Because it's setting the elements one by one, they need to be able to, uh, to copy. Therefore, assignment operator is there. Another thing that you need to have, you need to be able to have a default constructor for every each element. If it's, a, it's an array of employees, that employee must have a default constructor. Why? Because if I create an array of 50 of it, they all have to get initialized with no arguments for the constructor. Therefore, it needs a cop, uh, assignment operator. So, in the documentation of your template, you have to mention my, this, this array needs, the type of this array needs to be copyable and have a default constructor. All right? Now that it's done, I need to do the, the good old move stuff. Moving copy constructor, again, you should be able to do it with your eyes closed. There's no, no brainer on that. It's just the move. You just call the operator that does the move for you, and then you implement the move operator. And what does the move operator do? The move operator simply assumes the data of the right-hand operator, which essentially says, OK, First of all, I'll make sure I'm not copying to myself. Secondly, I'm going to delete the data of this one. And then I'm going to make, yeah, I'm, then I'm going to make my data to point to the data of the target. Because the definition of my empty array is an array with one element, I'm not setting it to null. I'm setting it to one element. It depends. Again, this is a good example to show you that 
this value that you are actually, the, the action of null is not always null. You have to set the one that you are moving to its default state, not always null. My default state, my safe empty state for my array is an array with one element. Therefore, I'm doing that. And then I'm going to set the size of my object to the size of the right operand and say, set the size of the right operand to 1, then I'm returning myself. You do not need to return a move reference out. Who says that it, this one has to be moved? You don't need to. If, the, if they want to move it, they're going to put it in a move. And you don't need to worry about it. Remember, a move, up, a move assignment does not return a move reference. It returns a regular reference because you don't know if this is going to get moved later or not. You don't know. And I'm done. I have an array now. I have an array that hopefully will be able to work with different types, which means I should be able to have things like this. So first, I have the array thingy over there, and I have array A. So let me just copy these. <coughs> and I need one more array over here. So I'm going to say integer array A5, which means my integer array will be of five integers. And as you see, I have the signature over there. I'm going to create an array of strings. I don't know how many, so I'm just going to create one and go on the fly. It's going to resize itself. And let's try it and see if it works. So for the array of five integers, I'm going to set seven of them to something. So I'm going to start from 0, go up to 7, actually exceed the size, see if it's going to crash. And then for the string, I'm going to just enter three names, and I'm going to show those three names. And running these programs, let's see if it's going to actually crash or it's going to work. Meanwhile, I'm going to, there you go. So as you see, it actually ran and showed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements printed with absolutely no problem. So an array of five integers, it got expanded to seven. Easy. And, it, and the code for it, if you look at it, has no difference with a regular uh, array that you're dealing with. Are we OK with this? And you know why I can put actually the assignment, the, the index operator at left side of assignment? It's because the the index operator returns the reference of the current element. Because it's a reference, it can sit as a left value. As an L value, you can set it to something. It's reference of something. And it's going to ask me to enter three names, and I'm going to enter over here Jack, Jill, and Joe. And it's going to show me the Jack and Jill and Joe. So now I have an array that can resize itself to anything. Now, you can actually do other things over here with this array that I haven't done. For example, when you get the address of the array, it's a good idea to be able to like you ampersand when you put the ampersand beside it, and you want to get the address of the array or cast the array to the type. You want to be able to actually get the, uh, the address of the beginning of the data. You want to be able to do that. Go find out how to do it. How can you overload? You know what the cast operator is and how does it work? See if you can do it. Okay? See if you can do it in a way so if I extract the address of the of the object, it actually sends me the address of the first element. Okay? See if you can do it. Kind of a challenge. Pardon me? So so what I'm saying is that if I cast A to an integer pointer, I want the address of, I want m data to be returned. Okay, so if you cast the array to the pointer of its type, the type that is carrying, 
I want that. So if somebody wants to actually have the physical address of the location of the array, they can grab it. OK? I know it's a kind of a security hole, but it's pretty useful. Now, to kind of boost this thing and see how we can actually have more interesting templates written, I'm going to create a, a, a KVP class. And, uh, who knows what is a KVP? Key value pair. The well, KVP is a key value pair. Essentially, any telephone book that you have, any dictionary that you're opening, it's a key value, right? It has a, the values could be many, but it has a key that you search for the key and you find the value for that key. That's a key value pair. So I want to create something for that. I want to create a class for a key value stuff so I can put key and value to it and then show them. But I want it to be key value of anything. Okay? So to do that, what I need to do is to create a class. The first thing I need to do is to find out what are the things that I want to have in this template. So I want to have a key. The key can be any type. It could be an integer. It could be an address. It could be a string. It could be anything. The key could be anything. So that's one part of the type. The value could be anything. It could be integers, it could be phone numbers, it could be addresses, it could be strings. I don't know what they are. And it could be more than one. So the values could be 5, 50, 3, 2. I don't know how many. So I have to make my template switch its size of the values based on the request of the programmer. Therefore, the proper header for this template would be something like this. So my template has a key type. It has a value type, and it has a normal value, integer value, that is the size of the values, which means that my values are going to be an array of many values that I have. And how do I create the content for it? That's pretty simple, too. So essentially, that becomes my class. I have key type, M key, and I'm initializing it universally to nothing. I have value type, M value, to this size that they're going to tell me what it's going to be. And I'm going to nullify all of them too, default all of them. The empty bracket is the best thing to say is to de default them. We are defaulting them, whatever that default may be. If it's an integer, it's zero. If it's uh, I don't know, uh, a class with a default constructor is going to be that default constructor. So it's going to be all, if, it's, if they are pointer, it's going to be all null PTR. And <clears throat> for my purpose, what I want to do, I want to be able to read values from the keyboard and put in this key and this value type and get it and print it for now. Uh, of course, you should be able to get the key and search on it, and I don't want to do that. I just want to put values and take them out. Therefore, I'm going to write only two functions in here. First of all, uh, because I want to read and print this, so that's KVP value that I have over here. We'll need IO stream. And if I want to read them from the screen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say stdi stream. Can I say using namespace up there and get rid of all those STDs? No, it's a header file. Header files you're not allowed to use using in them. Remember that? OK. So I'm going to say iStream reference read, and I'm going to receive the iStream over there. I'm going to say get the key, then start from 0, go up to value size, show a row number, slash val size, so it shows 1 of 10, 2 of 10, 3 of 10. I know how many keys are being entered. One by one prompts, and it gets the keys and ignores a new line afterwards to make sure there is no garbage. Easy breezy. And then I return that IS. 
that's my read. And if I want to make sure, if I want people to explicitly call the read, I can always default my read to std uh, cn. So if they just want to call the read function, automatically it's going to call it from cn. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to print these values out. And that's what's going to be it. And again, I'm going to default this thing to std c out. So if they want to print this, it's going to print the key and a column. Then it's going to co uh, print them comma separated. Make sure the comma is not printed after the last one. So one by one, it's going to print the values and comma. So if I have a key with five values, it shows the key. And first value, comma, second, third, it's going to show them one by one and go through it. <clears throat> and now I want to be able to actually print this KVP value on screen and read it from screen like usual C in and C out. We have done this 55,000 times. And I'm going to do it one more time over here, which is essentially this. As you see, to have the functions externally created, I have to have the template header exactly what I have for the class, even if I'm not using anything in them. OK? So I'm saying O stream operator, O stream OS, and oh, what happened to the STD over there? And then get a KVP value for me. Reference KVP. But this KVP must be of this type, whatever that type is. So I simply say this operator is written for a KVP of this type. Therefore, for every single KVP that I create, a separate function overload will be generated. That specifically works for that KVP. All right? And the exact same thing for the output, for the input. So that's the output, and this is the input. This one is a constant reference because I just want to print it. This one is a regular uh, reference because I want to actually read it. So it cannot be constant. And now I have the KVP. Now what I can do is have another array over here. So I can actually create an array over there of type. I'm going to say create an array of type. Oh, I need KVP here. Sorry. All right. Oh, KVP. Now I'm going to say I want an array. So in here I have to put some kind of a type. And in here, let's call it uh, KVP. OK? So I want to have an array of KPVs. Now, in here, for this type, what I want to put, I want to put a KVP that I want to put a KVP that is a string for key, is an integer for values, and I want two values over there. So it's going to show, it's going to be an array of key value pairs where key is string. Value is an array of two integers. It's going to create an array of that. Now, in here, I can use those values. Give an example for it. Enter three names and this and their lab and do it yourself marks. OK? So what happens? Again, in here, I did not mention how many. So it's an array of one KVP. So what happens over here, as it goes through it, it's going to expand it and make it more and more as it goes. All right? So, so why did we do that, by the way? Why did I even mention the size? Couldn't I just make one and let it, let it resize itself? Can anybody tell me what is the purpose of actually giving an initial value for it? To 
be in control of objects because that memory resizing is an extremely hideous thing to do for a computer. It takes lots of times, lots of time. If you have 10,000, say, employees, and you want to make it 10,001, it has to first create an array of 10,001 employees, then do 10,000 loops, copy everything from here to there, using the copy constructor and assignment operator. Then delete the target, and I have a new one. You know how much time consuming that is? OK? And that cannot be done with move constructor or movement because it's actually resizing it. It needs all the values. And if I have 10,000 bytes, let's say I have characters. I create an array of characters. If I have 10,000 characters, I want to make it 10,001. How much memory do I need on, in my computer? 20,001. 20,001 to make that 10,000, 10,001. Because you have to allocate the exact, so need, and that has to be continuous memory. It cannot be fragments here or there. So you may have extra memory, but it won't even call run because, anyways, you know. And now if I run this program, I'm just going to comment the beginning because we know those things work. I'm not going to waste our time on those. So let's comment those. Now if I run this, it's going to give me an error. <laughs> Invalid data from new data. Something is happening here. I don't know. I renamed something and it doesn't work. But anyways, I have it at the other side so I can run that one and I'll show it to you. So I'm gonna, I don't know what I copied wrong. I'm going to bring the other one on and run, run that one. So.